ran into that. I'll just leave you there then. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Out of here! Oh, oh, no, 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 no! no! Now remember kids, what do we always say? It ain't a war crime the first time. I've never heard that. That's that's one of his sayings. Oh, okay. I can't lay claim to that one. Fat I was say, I've never heard that before. He's got a shirt in his merch store with that on it. I really want it. <laughs> oh, that is the shirt. Yeah. He's, he, honestly, uh, that's one of my favorite sayings that he's got because it's true. I mean, hell, and even when, it, when people want it to be declared a war crime, it's never really declared a war crime. For instance, shotguns. <laughs> Did you know that pump action shotguns were like were so over, like so good at their job in World War 1 that the Germans, who by the way, used mustard gas and chemical warfare, but yet they were the ones who said, "Oh no, shotguns? No, that's that causes unnecessary suffering. We don't like <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? The, yeah, the people who used mustard gas and chemical warfare said that shotguns... Shotguns are just too... That's too much suffering. I know he was in World War II, not one, but for some reason I just see another Brad Pitt character that's basically the same <clears throat> as Aldo Rain. He's been like, look at that guy over there that you just threw that gas grenade at. He's suffering right now. Mm -hmm. Your friend right there that splattered and painted the wall, how is he suffering exactly? <laughs> that's the, always the thing but you want to know as far as why, I know he's chilling with God in heaven or Satan in hell I guess that could be something well where he was a Nazi, <laughs> well where he was a Nazi he's probably burning in hell yeah I guess since it's on your side and you're the bad guys he's probably in hell so I guess fair <laughs> but here's the thing with that the reason why the Germans actually did it and tried to like get the Americans to stop using shotguns is because they were too effective the amount of like trenches that were cleared and, like, on the Western Front, from when Americans finally entered the fray and started using the trench guns, like, they were so effective, they actually called them the trench brooms because they were mm. so good at cleaning up the trenches. Wow. And, yeah. It's basically, they were just salty that they were losing to them. Yes. Yeah. And they actually put a thing out that said, okay, seeing as how America doesn't want to play ball on, you know, sh like, clearly, because shotguns are clearly a war crime, we're going to instead, like, torture every shotgunner that we come across or even if they're carrying shotgun ammunition well that's the thing in general like um anything that an opposing side finds annoying like if they capture someone who that's their job to do it they are not nice to them yeah so like snipers are one that i know you definitely don't want to be caught if you're a sniper oh no uh you definitely don't want to be caught as a pilot oh yeah and that's just a thing. Like, if they don't like what you're doing to fight against their side and they catch you, that you're going to have a bad time. Well, yeah, it's an infantryman kind of thing, I guess. Mm. Although, unless you're the Japanese in which you hate everybody and you just maliciously torture them and, and do horrible things. But, <clears throat> anyway. Um, the title of this video, basically a war crime. America's future weapon, the XM-29. So, <clears throat> I know what an XM-8 is, but I've not heard of an XM-29. Well, it's obviously better because it's 21 more than I was going to say, where did 9 through 28 go? <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> I know XM-8 got thrown out because they were just like, nah, we're good. I think they were too expensive to make or something like that. I think that's what you the case of this You know the gun that too. was in my room that broke when you were helping me clean? Yeah. That was an XM-8. That's what that is. Well, well, the uh, from what I've heard about the XM29, it was pretty ridiculous with how good it was. But once again, too expensive from what I from what I've read and everything. Um, another thing too is America is really good at coming up with different kinds of not just weapons but also ammunition. For instance, shotguns. There's actually a shotgun round that they have. That is a fin-stabilized grenade. Hmm. It shoots out of the shell, 
and it basically is like spring loaded, pow, comes out, and then spring loaded fins come out, and it spins the grenade charge, and it actually can blow up cinder blocks. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Like, there was a guy who used it, and it was weird because, you know, you usually hear with a shotgun, it's like a cannon blast. Instead, it was. And then downrange. Boom, boom, boom. Dang. It was so cool. It'd I love really that useful stuff. if there was somebody dug in the cover you couldn't get to. Oh, yeah. Them. If they were in a dugout and you wanted to take out the supports and, you know, basically trap them in there, there you go. Uh, but the XM29, basically a war crime. Uh, Fat Electrician's got a video on it. Let's check it out, shall we? Here we go. Okay, I guess part two of all the weird future weapons the government wasted. Oh. Okay, I guess part two of all the weird future we weapons the government wasted screen. our money on. Today we're talking about that time that Uncle Sam decided that he wanted to take the M16, the US military's primary firearm, and replace it with a grenade launcher. But first an angry rant, I mean an ad, brought to you by my favorite news app, Ground News. <laughs> they collect news from over 50,000 sources, sticking it into one convenient app, allowing you to compare all the news coverage in one convenient location. Allowing you to simply swipe over to read different headlines for the same exact story, being able to tell which outlet is biased and which isn't, and how factual their articles actually are. And that factuality rating is really important because every once in a while some dumb stuff happens you know like the marine corps pulling a wonder woman and forgetting where they parked the invisible jet oh no <laughs> what seems to be the trouble wonder woman i locked my keys in the jet holy keys locked in the jet batman because in times like these real news and facts always gets drowned out by crazy conspiracy theories like you know, my uncle back in the day thought about joining the military and he said that it's probably because the pilot had TikTok installed on his phone and that Chinese malware somehow seeped into the F-35 and took over the F-35, ejected the pilot and then flew itself to Cuba. I mean, probably not. It was more than likely just some dumb shit, you know, like there was a legitimate malfunction that caused the pilot to eject and then Lockheed Martin forgot to put a kill switch inside the seat. So the autopilot just kept the plane going for another 80 miles and nobody could track it because it's a stealth fighter. And now, thanks to Brown News, I know that the government is trying to pull the oldest trick in the military handbook of claiming it's a feature and not a fuck up. Okay, look, I'm not trying to say that I'm smart enough to build a stealth fighter. All I'm saying is I've got a lawnmower in my garage and whenever I get off the seat while the mower is running, it shuts down. And if I was going to build an $80 million plane, I would probably incorporate something along those lines. But hey, maybe that's a lesson to be <clears> learned yeah. here. The government should actually be investing in Toro zero turn radius fighter jets because this would have never happened and it would bring a whole new meaning to the phrase <laughs> mowing down the enemy. Damn and for it. you, you should be investing in ground news. And now let's get back to the video. All right, so Operation Give Everybody a Grenade Launcher is officially known as the OICW program, which stands for Objective Individual Combat Weapon. Why on earth would you call it that? Well, because the weapon they made was the XM-29, a.k.a. the tactical car door. That is a 20 millimeter grenade launcher that fires programmable smart grenades on top and a German G36 on the bottom. Jesus. And when your end goal is to give a weapon that ridiculous to every single grunt in the U.S. military, you kind of have to give it a bland acronym of a nickname because when Geneva finds out that you're replacing the M16, she's going to have some questions. And when she wants to know the name and a brief description of this new weapon, it behooves everybody for you to be like, um... It's objectively speaking, it is a combat weapon and it's meant for an individual and we call it the OICW. Because the rest of the brass wants to go in there and tell the truth. I, I wonder um, I wonder if that's it's, what it's the weapons manufacturer told the uh, the like humane's committee on like if this was gonna be declared a war crime or not. It's like, well, objectively, it is a weapon uh, meant for individual use. <laughs> and that's it. And they were like why does it have a 20 round grenade launcher on top ah about that i don't know but <laughs> it is like, cool objectively a flamethrower is a weapon meant for individual use and we banned that so mm, yeah. be more specific assets <laughs> <laughs> automatic grenade launcher with an underslung 556 rifle I, we don't have an official name for it yet, but the boys are calling it the Baloney Mist Maker 5000. What's happening? It's all downhill from there. Next yes. thing you know, people are asking questions. People are making points, you know, like, hey, exploding bullets have been illegal since 1899. Would you care to explain the difference between an exploding bullet and a really small grenade that gets shot out of a gun? It would be a complete nightmare. So, acronym seems dumb, actually very important. It's basically camouflage at this point. I'm just going to be honest with you. That tangent was not supposed to be part of the video, and I have no idea how to continue from here so i'm just gonna rewind and start over okay see you in a second 
Today we learned America's Starship Trooper weapon. He literally restarted the video. Damn it. And the XM29. Yeah, that's the other thing too, is that it can help see around corners. All right, so picking up where we left off. Last week, we covered the ACR program, the Advanced Combat Rifle. If you don't remember, basically the military came out right after Vietnam and said, hey, we want a new weapon to replace ZM-16. We want it to be twice as accurate as ZM-16 is. And all the weapons manufacturers took that as, hey, let's build a bunch of space guns to hunt aliens with. There was all kinds of craziness going on. They had guns that were shooting darts. They had guns that had grandfather clocks inside of them. And Colt even made a gun that every time you shot a bad guy, it was worth double XP. And when the <laughs> Yeah. This ridiculous innovation somewhere along the way the military came to the conclusion of like oh instead of trying to rebuild a gun from the ground up we could just put a scope on the m16 and it'd be way more accurate and that's the story of how the american military got acogs in the m145 combat optic which is great the only problem was they spent 300 million dollars to figure out that guns are more accurate when you put scopes on them and now people want answers so the government launched an internal <laughs> oh the government wastes money on shit that they don't use eventually in the end? Who'd have thunk it? Jesus. ...investigation against itself, and you're never going to believe what happened. The government determined that the government did nothing wrong. <gasps> you see, the program wow. didn't fail because of corruption or the government's inability to point out obvious shit. Clearly, the program failed because the government has done such an incredible job with the M16A2, it simply can't be beat ever. It is the pinnacle of ballistic performance. They have maxed out the skill tree on small arms and bullets. I would tend to disagree. I would say that in terms of practicality and in terms of overall use and in terms of how easy it is to tear down and rebuild and how depend how dependable it is in water, mud, sand, dirt, and every element out there. I still say the AK-47 is the most dependable, like, assault weapon probably ever. I mean, it's literally almost one of the most perfectly built guns I've ever seen. There is not a wasted motion with it. And that's, it's crazy. But you can't just go copy the other countries. You gotta be unique, because you're Merca. <sighs> Honestly, go from the M16 to the M4. You can't admit that somebody else did something better than we could. Dude, Kalashnikov was a genius, okay? I don't care what anyone says. Kalashnikov was a fucking genius. There's nothing else that can be done. We live in a golden age. Everything worth discovering has been discovered. The report then goes on to recommend that if the government still wanted to increase movie. the lethality of its soldiers, the only option they should pursue is an explosive option, i.e. we're all getting grenade launchers. Yes! That's awesome. So they fire yeah. the contracts, and this that. time they do actually have a declared that winner, and that is HK with their submission, the XM-29. And to be fair, technologically speaking, this thing is actually really impressive. That scope on top isn't just a scope. It's a regular scope, a night vision scope, a thermal scope, a range finder, and a ballistic calculator all in one. And using that, that setup, they're able to pre-program every grenade before they fire it to airburst mode so it blows up at a certain distance away from the gun, not necessarily before it hits something. All right, so in theory, for example, how this is supposed to work is say there's a bad guy hiding behind a concrete wall, so you whip out the Bologna Mist Maker 5000. You then point the gun at the concrete wall the bad guy's hiding behind and you click this little dot button by the trigger that tells the laser range finder how far away the wall is then if you want it to explode a little bit past the wall you hit the plus a few times now the grenade is going to be programmed to explode a little bit past the distance of where that wall is away from you so then you just fire the grenade right over the top of the wall and it's going to explode as soon as it passes the wall right on top of the enemy's head Rattling. and then if the situation doesn't really call for grenades it also has an underslung 556 rifle that is essentially the hkg 36 and most importantly on that rifle to answer the question that every marine has had since the very beginning of this video yes there is a bayonet lug for this weapon taken out with a bayonet on the end of this monstrosity you're just sitting up there at the pearly gate waiting to find out if you're going up or down somebody leans over is like hey what happened to you oh i got hit with a drone strike what about you uh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you i think i'm 
a marine jumped into my trench and stabbed me with a piece of luggage. <laughs> so this begs the question: <laughs> the adopt this thing if it's so awesome. Well, it's awesome in theory. It's not so awesome in practice. There's a lot of things wrong with it. For one, this thing empty with no ammunition inside of it weighs 18 pounds, which is Ooh, very heavy for a firearm. Yeah. Uh, to put that into perspective, an M16 kitted out with a grenade launcher, an ACOG, a PEC-15 IR unit, the whole shebang is about 12 pounds. So this thing is 50% heavier. Also with the XM29, there was just some bad design ideas. Okay, so if we look at the M16 with the M203 grenade launcher, notice how it shoots bullets and it shoots grenades and there is a trigger for shooting grenades and there is a trigger for shooting bullets they're separate then you look over at the xm29 there's only one trigger yeah. and it shoots both bullets and grenades and the only differentiator between the two is this little selector switch right here ke standing for kinetic energy or bullets and he standing for high explosive so i mean you can imagine somebody <laughs> forgetting where their selector switch is firing a warning shot and whoops that was a grenade not a 556 five, round my bad. Okay, third and final reason, it was just going to be a logistical nightmare all the way throughout because that big ass fancy scope on top is going to take batteries. And if you can't get batteries to make that scope work, the range finder isn't going to work, which means you can't program the smart grenades, which means you're basically carrying around an 18 pound gun that is ultimately a 5.56 rifle with a nine inch barrel and a nine inch barrel at 5.56 gives you a range of like 200 yards. So it just doesn't work out if you don't have batteries. Secondly, even if you can get batteries all the way there, you got to have smart grenades which have microchips on them and i don't know what you know about american manufacturing but we're not that great at making microchips and the places we get all our microchips from are either places we're likely to go to war with or places that are bordering places that we're likely to go to war with which could pose a huge issue in ammo procurement should war break out so because of all these reasons in 2004 the chief of the infantry steps up and is like absolutely not i'm not sending all these guys out to the front lines carrying tactical car doors this is not happening kill the program it's over so at this point all the other high-ranking brass and bureaucrats and weapons contractors are like well this is kind of an issue because this program was going to be the reason that it was okay that we messed up the last program that cost 300 million dollars and now we've spent a bunch of more money on this program so much so that we're not even going to tell the public how much we kind of have to make this program work so what if we kept the program alive and we just split this gun into two pieces we'll have the rifle that's going to replace the m16 ah, and then we'll the also have this cool sp there you go I get, please don't tell me they did like the basic math of like the XM8 and then the grenade launcher became the XM21. It's gotta be. Fuck. Smart grenade launcher, how about that? To which the Pentagon is like, oh my God, what a terrific idea. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And I can't prove this part, but the word on the street has always been at this point in the project, the only feedback the Pentagon gave about the actual rifle portion was, and I quote, Make sure it's more Starship Troopers-like, and this is where the XM8 comes from. <laughs> and while the G8 does look really cool and super futuristic, ultimately it was just the German service rifle, the G36, that HK took and wrapped inside of a plastic body kit to make it look cooler, and then tried to sell it to the American government. And their big selling point was going to be that the new XM8 was going to be modular, meaning that you could take different barrel lengths and stick them on the same gun, making it so it was better at different types of combat. If you were going to be doing a bunch of close quarters combat, you could have a little short barrel. And if you were going to be doing further out combat, you could have a longer barrel for improved accuracy, which honestly is a terrific idea. The only problem is the AR platform, the M16, the M4, it can already do that. So just to be clear, it doesn't do anything new that the M16 isn't already doing, and it shoots the exact same bullet. So there's pretty much no reason whatsoever to waste the money in switching rifles to a rifle that's basically the same. But there's money Except and reputations on the cool. line, so they're going to keep trying to make it happen <laughs> anyways. They end up ordering a bunch of prototypes, have it tested by the military, and everybody finds out pretty much immediately, oh, hey, when you shoot a bunch of bullets through this plastic gun, it gets hot, and then the plastic starts melting off the oh. gun. So the XM8 ends up getting scrapped in 2007, but... There is a silver lining, it's not a complete loss, because we still have the XM25, the smart grenade launcher. And this XM25. So in other words, what happened to my uh, uh, Airsoft version of the XM8 wasn't entirely inaccurate. I mean, they're going to break eventually from the sound of it. <laughs> they made of plastic. Yeah. What do you it literally just fell into a bunch of pieces. Yeah. 
thing is actually absolutely awesome. It's pretty much the same grenade launcher from the XM29. The only thing they changed is they bumped it up from a 20 millimeter to a 25 millimeter grenade to make it a little bit more lethal. And now the plan moving forward with this thing is instead of having everybody in the military carry a grenade launcher, you're just going to take one guy from the squad and have him be the smart grenade launcher guy. Like you lose one rifleman, you gain one guy that can shoot smart grenades 700 yards. It's a pretty fair trade off and probably a really good idea in a lot of use cases. So they give to the grunts and send them off to war and seemingly everybody loves it. The Rangers get a hold of it. They seem to like it. They give it to the 101st Airborne and those guys absolutely love it. They end up nicknaming it the Punisher. Some of the leaders in the infantry are quoted as saying it'll turn a 30 minute gunfight into a three minute gunfight. This thing is absolutely awesome because you can have everybody using their M16s, their M4s, their 240s, their saws, laying down suppressing fire, forcing the enemy to hide behind cover and then just use a grenade to take out the enemy from behind cover and it's a huge tactical advantage and this goes on for years until one day in 2016 the entire narrative changes and seemingly overnight the xm25 punisher becomes a giant piece of shit somebody starts digging up all these old stories looking for anything in the history of the xm25 that could be used against it like there was this one time back in 2012 where this one ranger unit on this one mission decided that they would rather have a rifleman instead of this grenade launcher therefore this weapon must not be very reliable it's not like the rangers are a special operations unit and maybe that particular mission didn't call for a fucking grenade launcher but whatever uh. oh and then there was this one time in 2013 where the weapon malfunctioned one time and all the safety features worked exactly how they were supposed to but the operator of the weapon still got a minor injury so we're gonna go ahead and use that as the excuse to can the entire program for you know troop safety because nobody's gonna get mad at us if we're trying to protect the troops right right Okay, because here's what we're not gonna do. We're absolutely not gonna tell the American public that somewhere along the line, somebody remembered, oh, exploding bullets are a war crime and they have been since the 1800s. I wonder what the difference is between an exploding bullet and a small grenade that gets shot out of a gun. And then if you Google it, Holy shit, this line has been drawn in the sand since 1868. If it's 400 grams or less, it's an exploding bullet. And if it's more than that, it's a piece of ordnance. And a 25 millimeter grenade is apparently less than 400 grams. So this entire project has been a war crime the entire time, right from the get-go. Hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money has now been wasted because somebody that ran this project didn't want to Google shit first. You know, it's only a war crime if the bullet explodes inside the enemy. This is supposed to explode over the top of the enemy, so this should be completely legal. Yeah, that is true, but hear me out. If you can point the laser at the wall the bad guy is hiding behind and make the grenade explode a couple inches past that wall, you can also aim the laser at the bad guy and make that grenade explode a couple inches into that bad guy. Great clip. So yeah, I guess Great the conclusion, that's that a story of the OICW program. That time the U.S. government decided that they were going to spend three decades and hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, to develop a fancy new futuristic grenade launcher that from its inception, the very idea of it was actually illegal. Thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack, bang, out. Well, there you go. Oh, you know, it's only a war crime if the bullet explodes inside the enemy. If it explodes... <laughs> <laughs> little, little blooper little, little bloop uh damn so yeah uh that's <clears throat> that's the xm29 everybody damn what a freaking beast of a gun i am i honestly i love this thing i if it were made of metal i if it were if it if they could find ways to make it lighter if they made it like 14 pounds instead of 18 pounds and it was made of like magnesium you know instead of instead of plastic I'm talking about the XM8 no I'm talking about all like so I don't think the 29 was originally made of plastic I think that was just the XM8 eh well either way if, if it like I would have tried to find different materials to make it out of to make it to make it basically lighter and also if it was made of plastic tried to make it make it more durable either way it's a war crime so yeah you can't do it hey <laughs> hey what what 
Hey, what the uh, international commissions don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So the XM twenty nine, ladies and gentlemen, what did y'all think about the XM twenty nine? Pretty crazy weapon, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I know that I couldn't carry it. <laughs> Eighteen pounds. Yeah. I, say, I mean, I could carry like twenty five pounds. Yeah. With one arm, but I don't know. I don't uh, know. It would just be awkward. It would add a lot of extra strain to all the soldiers to have to carry that thing around. Yeah. yeah. It's like the heavier your gun, the more tired <gasps> you're going to get more quickly, you know. So. I don't like how it's just one trigger. That, yeah, that was weird. Um, yeah, that would... I could see that being a problem, but... It's like they say, like, the, uh... Regular uh, triggers are usually like semi-auto is like normal, and then full auto is rock and roll. So for this one, they got a regular trigger, and then they got a death metal trigger. Yeah. <laughs> like death yeah, metal yeah. switch. <laughs> Flip it over to death metal now. <laughs> yeah. Just all of a sudden, just here. I just love that. Uh, so yeah. It is cool how it has like microchips and the um on the smart grenades. Yeah. Yeah. I, here's the thing about my interesting. Mi- here's the thing about microchips. It's gotten a lot easier to make them now because of the uh the dyes that they have. Mm. Uh used to be microchips were, you know, cut from like silicon and all that. Instead now they're actually able to three D print these things. Using a mold and basically, like microprocessors and stuff like that are much easier to or make now. So, the logistics of this gun could actually make more sense. Uh, but either well, way, I think they should just make the grenades like heavier than the gram like thing. Make, you know, it, like one make gram. it exactly four thousand one exa- grams. Yeah, make it exactly like one gram heavier than it, than so that it becomes ordnance. So they should still use them. It's like. <laughs> Hells that I can just see like one was like like nine nine you cannot use that why not it weighs exactly three hundred and three thousand three thousand nine hundred and ninety nine grams it is too light all of a sudden dude just pulls out a piece of gum like there you go <laughs> there you go how much it weigh now <laughs> be like be like four thousand and three grams thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I could I could see some like some dude in the in the military doing that, uh, <laughs> uh. But yeah, this was this was a great video, and the fat electrician delivers once again. Uh, so yeah, many. I like his content. I do too. He's fun. Yeah. He's a lot of fun. So anyway, that's gonna do it. This uh, was basically a war crime. America's future weapon, the XM-29. And if you all enjoyed and you want to see more from uh, the Fat Electrician, feel free to click his name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Take care. Peace.